Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Pacific Championship Series. This is week three, day three, our final day of the week so far. I'm going to be your play by play and host. My name is Clement Chu, and with me is the ever so handsome, I know I always say that, but I'll repeat it again, <laughs> Night Star to my right side. Before we get the day going, we have to give a big shout out to our sponsors at CTPC Bank, China Airlines, and Chonghua Telecom. You guys make this leap possible. And another great big round of applause for our organizer at Briar Games, Karina and Carrie Live. Thank you for supporting our league and keeping us employed. <laughs> I always end up on that line. I probably shouldn't, but uh, you know, welcome back, Nightstar. It's always a blast to have you on the broadcast. How have you been liking the 11.14 patch so far? Well, uh, I gotta say this patch is definitely Impunity's patch to start climbing the ladder. Uh, because now, what do you know? They, you have to permaban Irelia. <laughs> this champ is so <laughs> busted. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Yeah, I totally uh, agree with you. If there is one champion that has risen up, it definitely is Irelia. We have seen her in the top lane and the mid lane uh, so far. And, uh, you know, we are going to be taking a look first at yesterday's results. Yesterday, we finished our first round robin. And I think most surprisingly was, uh, 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 was you know, PSG kind of looking a bit rocky, but still being able to clean things out quite, uh, quite nicely at the end of the day. Yeah, PSG, it, it does feel like that against some of these lower teams, that they are a little bit slacking, I would say. Maybe not necessarily in the preparation, but also kind of just like taking the game a little bit seriously. And well, so far it hasn't cost them, but starting the day off against Beyond Gaming, we really do need to see them really dial it in and show us why they are the best team or perhaps we get to see mega bank beyond gaming really come back and make a statement here and that is going to be a juicy matchup like you mentioned going to be the first game of the day so no waiting required we're going to be taking a look at the standing so far top four we do have boom esports as the newcomer really taking over jt's spot compared to spring split and then as you go down a little bit hong kong attitude and Impunity also making big strides to solidify their position a little bit upper on the table while Alpha Esports and Liab still really kind of struggling trying to find their footsteps in the second round Robin. Anything special like that you would like to point out here? It's really just the gap between the top half of the standings and the bottom half, right? And even then you can say that Hong Kong attitude are just a step above over the other four teams in that half of the bracket or in the half the standing so uh, it's a bit of a skill disparity here and what i'm really looking forward to is how do these bottom four teams develop in the second round robin to really make a push to solidify their spot in the playoffs well, we'll see and uh, we'll find out as we continue with today's games. The first match really is our blockbuster, Mega Bank Beyond Gaming going up against PSG, your number one and number two. The second match is also a Titans clash between number three and number five if the PCS and Machi Esports and Taipei J team. And then you have another very close match. So the first three matches of the day, definitely a lot of playoff implication potential, a lot of standing potential as we go into it. Hong Kong Attitude versus Impunity, that one is going to be incredibly tight as well yeah i mean the first set of matches today are going to be really exciting when it comes to standings the second half really just comes down to what kind of upsets can we generate of course there's going to be very big underdog um, stories when it comes to these matchups in alpha and liab for the most part even though liab well they're not too far away from Berjaya. But then when you watch the games, it does feel like there is definitely a gap between the teams, even though, yet again, Liab's still looking very strong in the early game. It's just when it comes to the mid game, they really fall flat. <laughs> there isn't that much of a gap between 0 and 1, but mentally it, it feels like <laughs> yeah. forever, basically. Liab has still not won a game just yet. We'll see if they can improve their chances today. Uh, we do have, you know, just talking about the playoff format, if you're number one and number two, then you actually get a buy in the upper bracket. So very yep. important to get into the top two slots. 
later on six and uh seven and eight actually start in the lower bracket so mm -hmm. you definitely want to solidify your position from three to six that's generally how the pcs playoff sort of works um if you can get yourself into those at least like a middle four spots i think you get a much better shot and you get a second <laughs> chance essentially at the, the playoff uh, picture so far. So we're, we're gonna keep that in mind as we head on to the uh, head on to the split. But first off, we have the battle between PSG and Mega Bank Beyond Gaming. You know, Mega Bank Beyond Gaming, the only team to actually take down PSG in the spring split. Yep. They haven't done so in the first round robin, but they get another chance at it right now. We're gonna be taking a look at the rosters. It is gonna be Leon starting over PK today in the top side, Ushan, Malan, Jungle Mid, and Dago Kino in the bottom. Yeah, this is the roster that saw play in our first day of the split here, Liang, in that top side. I would expect that they try and really focus around getting Liang a very good matchup in that top side. Last time they did play, they went with a cannon pick up there. And the cannon pick really fell flat, Clement, because <laughs> he never got a flank angle, even though this was a composition with a cannon in the top lane and a Nico in the bot lane that was built to really push and pull apart the PSG lineup, and they never did any of that. I think we can confidently call that a draft loss, probably one of the biggest draft loss that we have seen this entire split. I know, Leon definitely should have kept that Pikachu in the Pokeball. I yeah. think he'll be going for other fighters this time around. But, uh, you know, I, I like that you pointed out the difference here. We have seen Mega Bank Beyond Gaming more on the side of playing big team fight compositions. They have gone for a lot of Felioses, have played around a lot of Doggo. But I feel like the uh, style of contrast on the other side for PSG has been very different as we move towards their roster. Nabi in the tap side, River Maple, as you always know it, and Unified Kaiwing rounding out the bottom side. PSG for me, they are playing at breakneck speed and they are playing with a ton of globals, a ton of mm -hmm. rotational advantages, ability to just tower dive. So they have an incredibly different flavor to Mega Bank Beyond Gaming where uh, I feel like the uh, the tempo from the two teams coming out is, is really just night and day. PSG in general just play a different brand of League of Legends from everyone else in the PCS at the moment. And part of that is the fact that they have just that much skill in each of their players. And the other part is they just have a better understanding of the game. They've been to that international stage. They know what other teams are playing. They understand why they're doing what they're doing. And in that regard, they're able to really flex the global meta over than just trying to play team fights. And for our match of the day, we're gonna have the supports facing each other. Very similar champion pools. I would give the extra point to Kino for a better gesture here. I think Kyle <laughs> might be looking a little bit too cool there. Uh, but uh, the two of them are very evenly matched all across the board. What do you feel about this one? It really just comes down to the difference in the fact that Kaiwing does play that bard. Both, uh, pretty much all the supports in our region are fairly stock standard when it comes to these champ pools, and Kaiwing's really the only one that has tried to deviate from that. Kino, again, he did try and bring out the Nico, but <laughs> let's just say it did not work out whatsoever. So we'll have to see if Kino ha has any other specialty picks to try and swing this bot lane matchup in their favor because that could be a really big pressure point if they're able to just straight up win the 2v2 and yet allow resources to be invested into Liang to capitalize at that Hanabi matchup. Yeah, that seems to be the place that you're going to over and over again. The potential for Leon to just blow Hanabi out of the water. And mm -hmm. I, I definitely agree with you. I think that has to be the matchup that everyone wants to look at and pay close attention to. I will say, though, Hanabi in the playoffs actually just beat out Leon. Just mm -hmm. mano y mano, yep. just in the laning phase. He did not crumble whatsoever. So, you know, that narrative, you can definitely say that's true for a regular split, but in postseason, he does tend to take it up yep. a notch. We're going to be heading straight into the bad picks. Beyond Gaming, going for the LeBlanc Lee Sin straight off the bat. We talked about the tempo game. Beyond Gaming know what PSG like to do. On the other hand, we're going to have the Zinzao and Viego taken away from Wuxia. 
And I wouldn't even be surprised if Beyond just go ahead and ban the TF as well here, just because Maple in that TF pick have just been absolutely dominant, but they are going to let it through this time around. They have gone and banned away the Ziggs. Of course, Ziggs in Unified's hands has just been another beast altogether. He's looked absolutely phenomenal, and he's been able to really carry the entirety of PSG on his back in certain games like Stealing Baird and Dragon and also being the solo damage threat in the team composition. Yeah, this is really interesting. Leon seems incredibly happy that Renekton's not banned and they banned Thrush instead, so, huh. Interesting to come down to it, you know. Uh, looks like Beyond Gaming are gonna let that one slide. They're gonna pick up Diana for Husha. And just as we mentioned, <laughs> Renekton instantly locked in for a Navi. Uh, you know, in the military, they call this SSDD. Um, same something, different day. And the Navi is going in at it again, your favorite weak side top laner with the Renekton. Yeah, first picking this here, while it does definitely make a lot of sense for PSG, uh, definitely also shows that Hanabi's champ pool can be a little bit questionable here. And it does also leave the Aurelia pick up and available. We'll see if they do lock it in, where they actually throw it into, but it will be the Jace locked in here, already building up a Siege composition with the Varus and the Jace. Super interesting to see such early picks, and these are pretty unique picks coming out from Beyond Gaming. Leon hasn't actually played that many games so far. Uh, I only count four games by him this split, but uh, this will be his debut oh. on Jace. We'll see how well he can take it into the matchup versus Renekton. Might not even be the Renekton. And we have a River favorite coming back. The Nidalee versus Renekton combo. Wow, it's been a while since we've seen this one, but uh, those of you that have a bit of League of Legends history all know that this is probably the deadliest combo that you can draft for yourself up in that top side. Yeah, it's that in the Renekton Elise, although Elise has definitely fallen out of favor given how strong the other AP champions are. But because of this Nilly pick, we are going to see solo lane Gwen and possibly this Renekton go into the mid lane. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what Maple ends up picking up when it comes to that mid lane um, pool. Of course, I would assume he plays everything because he just does that. And now going into the second phase it really just comes down to well, what are these bot lane matchups going to be uh, especially when it comes to the supports we'll see the Callista banned away by beyond gaming already taking away some more early game uh, aggression well psg take away the set and the lucian very interesting picks uh pans right here not really champions you associate with uh with doggo so far or Malin's champion pool but it, it seems like they, they don't want these early aggressive mid laners to be able to uh, change the equation so much. Now Beyond Gaming is the final ban here. And for the side of PSG, I think they really have to be aware of really the long range threat coming in from Beyond Gaming. So a Zoe could be something that Beyond look for to further augment this composition going into that mid lane. It does bring magic damage in both the mid and jungle roles, which could be a little bit troublesome. Uh, and Bard is definitely a very devastating pick as well. If PSG get it into their hands, it's just really just the bane of any long range composition whatsoever, because uh, the moment you get hit by that Bard ultimate, you're just sitting ducks, just waiting to get all in. Yeah, really interesting that we see the flash there. I, I don't think Kino plays it, so I was kind of wondering there. Yeah. Like, hmm, is he actually going to pick that, that? Because Bard is a very interesting champion where you have to have a level of familiarity with him to utilize his kit. If you're not familiar with the champion, you can actually end up killing your entire team. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Okay, he doesn't go for it, and, but I like the point that you made there. That it definitely could be a situation where Kaiwing goes for the Bard instead. Beyond Gaming going to go for the Camille for a little bit of side lane pressure, potentially being able to engage as well. And then we have Kino with his Leona. This is by far his best champion now that Rel has kind of fallen off the meta. On the other hand, we're going to have Kaiwing now having to pick his champion up. Shen would be 
very interesting. We haven't seen a Shen support so far. And uh, I don't think we've seen a Sejuani support either. It is just going to go back to something much more standard in the Braum, offering a little bit more protection. Now we have the comms. The Braum is going to offer a little bit of defensive capabilities for PSG, but it's really just there kind of to eat some of this poke coming in from Beyond Gaming. I don't really see it as being with a fully disengaged um, these compositions just because Beyond is mostly going to seed you from 2000 range, whereas PSG, they're trying to look for these all in windows here and it does also mean Hanabi's the one taking that Gwen up into the top side and we are going to see Maple take the Renekton into the mid lane so when it comes to Renekton Nidalee in the mid jungle 2v2 it loses a little bit of its threat because of how much shorter that mid lane is compared to the top lane but it definitely still has a lot of that lethal potential yeah, I agree with you. It's much harder to actually tower dive with that combo when it's mm -hmm. in the mid lane. It's shorter, the waves bounce back a lot more frequently and stuff like that. So it's harder to get that nailed down. Uh, like you see so many Renekton's level 3 Nidalees just go in and do. So uh, it's interesting why we see the drafts out. Pretty pretty interesting on uh, Beyond Gaming side that we don't actually see the, uh, the full lock-ins just yet. But I assume it should be the Camille top lane and the Jace mid um, with the... Uh, uh, with the jungler just being a Diana pick. So I I'm just going to ask you straight up because this is our number one team and number two team. But which one is going to come out ahead based on the drafts here? I want to hear your prediction. I think in general, the Beyond Gaming composition is going to be a lot better when it comes to scaling and also just like ways they can fight. Especially with this Braum pick, I just don't see where this Braum pick offers value just because of how long range that Beyond Gaming uh, squad is. And beyond blocking a couple of skill shots from a Varus or a uh, Jace, it just doesn't offer you anything. So <laughs> for me, it has to be Braum Aphilios slamming this bottom lane to then just snowball this Aphilius into a spot where all of a sudden he just becomes a 1v9 kind of threat. Okay, we'll find out shortly as we get into the loading screens here. Uh, I, I I do like the point that you made. The, the usual sort of engage points on the side of PSG are not really there. You have River on Nidalee and then a yep. Braum that is much more defensive. So how are you really going to catch out this really slippery composition coming in from Mega Bank Beyond Gaming when they clearly have a lot of poke duels in the Varus, in the uh, in the Jace as well. So we'll, we'll see how they actually get their engage. I, I think this is one of those situations where they might have to rely a little bit more on Hanabi. You know, we have seen a lot mm -hmm. of fights where needlework just opens everything up. That slow is actually pretty big early on. You get the 40% slow and then you can chase up. If you land it, of course, then you can chase up yeah. on it and uh, create a lot of havoc that way. So we'll find out if PSG actually actually can get that going. But from what I heard, from what I heard, you are saying that PSG is going to break their winning streak today and Beyond Gaming are going to come out. Yeah, I I'm mean, push you a little bit more for the definitive unless answer. Unless <laughs> just pops off, like it, it's really hard to see how you get this affiliates involved, right? I don't because... want to hear any butts. I don't want to hear any butts. Mega Bank Beyond Gaming, all day, all day, baby. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Mega I'm Bank Beyond you. Gaming, I really just want a better to see team. Someone actually challenge them. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Now we got the throwdown comments after that. We're going to be taking another look at the draft. We didn't get the lock in um, during the draft phase, but now we are certain that Liang is going to take the Camille to the top lane. Mawan with the Jace in the middle. And on the other hand, a bit of a bit of a switcheroo from PSG as well as they had the Renekton, but it didn't go on Hanabi. Actually, Hanabi is off Renekton duty. He gets to play Gwen this time around for a bit of a different flavor. Yeah, and week number one, he was also the one to get the MVP on this Gwen pick against Mega Bank Beyond Gaming. We'll have to see if he he is able to replicate that performance because in that game, it was really just about how well the PSG composition was able to apply flank pressure against the Mega Bank Beyond uh, squad, whereas Mega Bank Beyond 
they had the better flank comp and they weren't able to execute. We'll have to see how the dynamic changes this time around. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, I still remember that game so vividly, but Kennen and Nico trying to flank a team is, uh, it was kind of sad to watch, and a lot of props to Kaiwing for always having his exhaust on Leong, so he didn't manage to do anything, and then PK got most of the starting role. We'll see if that happens again. I, I will say that there is something that I find really interesting about the, uh, the composition from Beyond Gaming side, is the inclusion of this Diana. You typically don't really have something like a Diana in a poke composition. It, it mm -hmm. doesn't fit necessarily. But Husha has been so good on this champion that, you know, regardless of the composition, I, I still feel like Diana brings such a high amount of threat to any team that has to go up against him. Yeah, it just provides you so much execution power combined with that Camille once that poke does land from Doggo and Malan. And also the fact that Diana is the only magic damage threat in this composition, you're not going to see PSG itemize a lot of early MR because the threats are just coming from mostly AD threats. So if Husha gets ahead in this game, especially in the early game, this is a nightmare composition to play against if you are PSG. All right, we've heard it from our casters. We know that Mega Bank Beyond Gaming is the one to usurp PSG today. PSG so far, 10 wins, zero losses, a very long streak. But will it finally succumb to Mega Bank Beyond Gaming? We'll find out as we take a look at the rune so far. We do have a grasp in the top lane for Camille and also a Nike brought in by Hanabi here. I'm... A little bit surprised that Liang also didn't opt for the Ignite. You usually see that when you are running into Ignite matchups, uh, just to make sure you can match that pressure. But of course, you're going to be trying to follow up on the Diana engage. So Flash is going to also help supplement that coming in from the Camille. And the uh, other big drawback of this PSG composition is because you are running this Renekton. If this Renekton doesn't get ahead in lane phase, as is typically the, uh, the really big thing when you play Renekton top anyways as well, it's hard to see how they're able to fight in a 1-3-1 setup. Because both of these compositions would ideally run 1-3-1 for that mid-game. Yeah, that's a really good point. Renekton has been sort of that champion that does sort of fall off after a while if he's not getting that much of a lead. And so far, it looks like Maan is having a pretty good time in lane against him just early on. We're taking a look at the bottom side where PSG did leash for their bottom lane. So Beyond Gaming are expected to have a bit of a lead here. Indeed, they do get the push. Uh, already working on the second wave, while PSG has not even cleared out the first wave, so they should be holding pretty strong here and getting their level 2 advantage. Meanwhile, taking a look at the jungle pathing, we have um, jungle pathing that is completely opposite. River moving towards the top side to cover mm -hmm. Hanabi, who doesn't have his flash. In the meantime, we have Diana starting up on the wolves, clearing out the top side, and also spotting Hanabi here as he places his ward in, so both sides should have pretty good ideas on where these jungle paths mm -hmm. are going to end up. And the more interesting um, pathing is certainly coming in from River and the fact that he has a Renekton to play through. Usually when you do have Renekton, you're playing towards topside, but because this Renekton is in that mid lane, you have a lot more flexibility in what you, where you want to path. It ends up just being a bit of a standard uh, bot to top kind of focus here. And for the most part, it should be a fairly quiet early game, at least from the jungler perspective, getting that first clear through at the very least. And especially for the Diana, she does want to hit level six before she really does her damage. Yeah, we can see a roam here developing from PSG. River was spotted as he headed towards the mid lane. So that ward from Beyond Gaming early on definitely paying dividends. While Mawan is finding it very difficult to fight out the Renekton, even though Jace can have a pretty strong matchup against his champion. Uh, I do like the build here from Maple. He's just trying to play with the fact that he's resourceless, uh, doesn't have to use mana whatsoever. Meanwhile, in the top lane, we do have a bit of a lead here as Navi got the better trade. and does force the early TP out from Liang. Liang coming in with an extra Doran's item, so we'll slow him down a little bit in the build, but helps him fight a lot against this Ignite here. 
And mm -hmm. uh, looks like uh, we don't have River poking his head that far into the enemy jungle just then. Keeping track there gets the uh, gets the scuttle, but uh, both junglers yep. do. Yeah, both jugglers being able to get their respective scuttle crabs is more in favor for Husha here. And really, the idea for PSG with this Renekton going into the mid lane is just try and control as much scuttle crab um, as much as possible. Whenever that spawns, you're going to see Maple shove up and try and apply Ooh. pressure. And now Husha making a stop towards top lane. Hanabi has a good ward though, which means that he'll be able to just go ahead and back off. It does mean that Leon could really apply a lot of wave pressure, being able to hold this wave here, which is a really brilliant spot to hold it. Yeah, the wave does make its way over into the tower, which should trigger a bounce back and Anabi played that very well you know he I think he read the jungler quite well uh, Husha probably backing outside of vision but Hanabi still sensed that Diana probably wasn't coming back to his lane is able to get the push in now he expends his teleport so topside is equaled out meanwhile taking a look at the bottom we do have a bit of a lead actually developing here on the side of Unified able to head towards the scuttle on the bottom side first so We'll see if that becomes a, a big contest here for the two teams. Uh, we do have uh, Kaiwing roaming over there. Meanwhile, Hanabi has just getting been getting the better of Leon this entire time so far. Pushing him in, getting the better trades, the CS lead as well. And also matching the Dorn's item with the Dorn's Blade and the Dorn's Ring being built in here. So, very interesting that we see both top laners with double Dorn items coming in. And PSG now setting up for this scuttle, like you mentioned, a lot of emphasis with the Renekton pick and with this early Nidalee Renekton uh, combo just to make sure they get the lead here in the river. Yeah, it's really all about just choking resources away from Husha, slowing him down as much as possible. And he's really been the instrumental part of Beyond Gaming when it comes to these mid games, being able to hit really large moonfalls with that Diana pick. And... So far, it does mean that he's going to be delayed from level 6 just a little bit longer. Uh, the big issue here, though, is the fact that Liang is falling behind in that 1v1. He's just slowly getting chipped out, which is basically just the nature of Gwen here. He does have a lot better poke trades because you just load up on your passive and then immediately you go skip and slash into scissors and... Liang just takes max damage from all those stacks accumulated. And he doesn't have a whole lot of response either because he's not really maxing W, which would be his poke tool in this matchup. Yeah, you really need to have a champion that can stand and fight with Gwen to force her out of lane. That hasn't been the case, but Kino might be offering a bit of help here. Completely unspotted, roaming all the way towards the top lane. He Finally, could 1v2 this. Finally, Hanabi is going to find it out, and the TP is going to come in, but he does have the ultimate coming down, and doesn't lose that much HP. Only 200 HP here. burned. They're going to get two flashes here, and Husha just falls down for first blood. A 2v3 for PSG that they win with a very comfortable edge, and Maple is still coming in, still has his flash. Takes two power here now. shots, but Kino is left in no man's land with Kaiwing here for the 3v1. And that's a massive win going over to PSG. And it's really just PSG understanding what Mega Bank Beyond Gaming want to do on that first recall. You have Rift Herald about to spawn, so it naturally means both supports are going to try and make that roam somewhere. And Kino, he makes a roam top lane. The answer is coming immediately out. You look at the resources, it looks like Maan was going for the recall. Um, and he didn't have teleports as well, so he didn't have a way to respond to this gank and Mega Bank Beyond Gaming, they flub some of those timers and it really just bites them in the butt right here. Yeah, Maple with the burst and target selection was just so great in this team fight. He sees Diana Husha pop out. He's in a terrible position. As we have more fights going in, Maple has to flash out. Will the Moonfall kill him? Not no, enough damage. Coming down from Kaiwing and River coming in to pick That's up a double the kills. Though. They do find one. But as you mentioned, River gets the better end of that deal. Now walking away with the double kill into the Herald. That's just way too forced coming in from Mega Bank Beyond Gaming. You have a scaling composition. You want to be able to hit that first item on Moan and Doggo and then really start applying pressure, turning the tables. But they 
they saw that Huxia finally hit level 6 and he really wanted to pull off a play, so that's why they go for this. And, I mean, you burn the flash, but then the follow-up flash from Huxia, probably a little bit excessive there. But they saw blood in the water and they really wanted to take advantage of it. It's just a little bit too far. Mawan trading his flash just for that kill, falls down later. Now we have a situation developing in the top side where Diana is on the opposite end of the map. Navi already proxying him a little bit with the threat of River just throwing down that Herald. So very uncomfortable for Liang. Usha comes into the bot lane but is immediately spotted. So he's not going to get anything here on the bottom side of the map either. Doggo uses ultimate and didn't really catch where. It doesn't seem like it resulted in uh, any death so far, though Kai Wing, uh, 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 though Unify does lose his cleanse as Kai Wing lost his summoners in the earlier exchange here. And now we do have a bit of a setup for the Drake coming in, but uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I just kind of want to get your opinion on this one. But who do you think actually can contest this one? Beyond Gaming, even though they have the vision, it still seems pretty perilous for them. Yeah, you, you said it there, especially with a two and a half thousand gold lead at 10 minutes, it is incredibly perilous for Beyond Gaming to try and force this Dragon tank. And really all they want to do is stall out, force PSG to then go ahead and if they try and make a play there, but it looks like we're we going to have the collapse skirmish. coming in. Moonfall already popped by Husha. They're opening oh, up on River to get lot. the first kill. Hanabi might be the second one. Hextech Ultimata comes down. There's nowhere for him to go, but he is Maple's able here. to finally jump out as Maple comes in for the cleanup. Husha, with no summoners left, is going to fall at the end. That uh, is still a one-for-one -one trade beyond gaming on the losing side here. Is able to at least get something back. Uh, get an even trade going as River's still hunting around. Don't think he's going to get anything here. We'll take a look at that fight again, starting from the beginning. Yeah, and it's Kino having a really great roam here. They have numbers advantage coming over here. It, uh, unfortunately, they aren't able to force the kill onto Hanabi as well because of the fact that Maple does make the rotation and Kai Wing as well. So it ends up being a jungler for jungler trade. And it just really continues to emphasize the fact that they're just trying to make sure Husha doesn't get to play this game. They've invaded his jungle. Now a really big point on that blue buff to try and slow down, slow him down, force him to call resources from his laners and to try and keep him propped up. And unfortunately, he's now put in a really rough position. Down 14 CS, 131 for his score line. It's just applying a lot of pressure on this Mega Bank Beyond Gaming jungler to th then have either a big mid game or bust. Yeah, River with the lead, like you mentioned, is able to close out on Diana, make sure that she's not going to contest this one. Though they do sense the rotations and immediately back off afterwards. Highwing, though, is here to help, so this is going to be a 3v2 play if they decide to drop the Herald thinking about it and river does go for the herald already down to less than three plates so this herald should be falling down really quickly yep. giving over the first brick gold will be shared by two players here nabi incredibly fed we talked about a 14 cs in the jungler position look at that top lane it's uh, a 22 cs lead coming in for hanabi not even factoring the kills assists and the amount of tower gold that he has been getting on the flip side Mega Bank Beyond Gaming is going to find something on the bottom end, but uh, it's very far from getting the full turret like PSG did. Yeah, so far PSG just finding a lot more gold in their hands when it comes to these rotations, these objective takes, and for Mega Bank Beyond Gaming, they're a little bit too happy-go-lucky when it comes to opting for these skirmishes as well. Part of that, of course, is again just the suffocation onto Huxia. They've now not only just applied pressure when it comes to taking Crab, invading his jungle, it's also applying dive threat. And when you apply dive threat onto your solo laners, it also requires your jungler then to try and bail them out of these sticky situations. And River knows his job this game isn't to become the mega carry that PSG needs, rather it's to stifle the mega carry on the other side of the rift. 
I guess that mega carry was Liang. Uh, I have my doubts as whether he's going to be able to split push at all this game. Oh, Husha. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, definitely going to be Husha. Um, and he hasn't been able to get much going, you know. Already mm -hmm. died three times. We have PSG yep. going into the river. Very easy cleanup at this point. And PSG is just grouping and swinging onto the side from left to right. They have a Herald that's going to come up next. If you take a look at the vision on the map so far, nothing in the river for Beyond Gaming whatsoever. While PSG is already extending their ward line deep into the red side jungle. They're forcing Dago and Kino to abort their tower at this point. And there's just no help. They know that Diana's not there. They have a very easy 3v2 collapse. Beyond Gaming just have to respect the lead that PSG has at this mm -hmm. point. Yeah. And fortunately for them, tower plates are already gone. So they're not going to really hit a big bot lane uh, gold deficit because of that play. And it's mostly just denying what little bit of CS they can away from Dago. Make sure they slow down his power spike as much as possible. But very soon, we are going to see that power spike come through. Once both Maoan and Dago hit that Man Immune Muramana completion, that's where Beyond Gaming's composition really starts to take off. So uh, even though they are down three and a half thousand gold there's definitely still plenty of outs for them it just feels like the the map has got gotten a lot smaller for them though they can't even leave their side of the map and for psg they're gonna take up an easy herald no contest from beyond gaming not even close to coming down the ramps on either side of the map we do have Dago given some alone time on this tower, but it's basically been abdicated by PSG. PSG allowing them to pick that one up while they focus on the mid tower instead. Doesn't look like we're going to get an answer here on the end from Beyond Gaming. They have just left that turret to its fate. And we now have PSG taking the entirety of the top side down. A lot of gold going over to Unified and River once more. Taking a look at the items, we do have a Night Harvester coming out to Nidalee. It is the uh, standard item, but since we haven't seen her in quite a while, did want to point that one out. And also the Immortal Shield Bow being completed by Unified. Yeah, and Unified knows that there's a lot of poke coming through, and he needs to have that extra little bit of lifesteal and also that shielding to make sure he doesn't get popped too early in these fights, or at least have a way of sustaining himself back up. And I mean, for PSG, now they shift into a 1 3 1 right now because of how strong Maple is just naturally as a champion. Uh, they're going to be incredibly powerful right now at the 17 minute mark. And it's for Beyond Gaming to try and find a way to funnel enough gold into their soul laners, make sure they hit those second item power spikes, and then look for maybe an ARAM or some sort of team fight to get themselves back into the game. All right, we'll wait to see if that ARAM ever happens, but in the downtime, I do want to point out that the best emote on 11.14 has to be the Scream. Everyone is using it. It doesn't matter if it's LCK or if it's a PCS. That seems to be the new emote to express your terror at how much the enemy team has gotten the lead over you. We saw Kino flash that one. We saw yesterday, uh, I believe it was Chovy getting in on the emote game too. It's just, uh, the scream is everywhere on the Rift. And if you haven't purchased it yet, I strongly advise you to do so. <laughs> it's just so flexible, right? Whether it's a, a really pop, big pop-off play, you can use it as simple mm -hmm. as like, wow, what a play. Or it's just, you're getting camped and be like, please leave me alone. It's just too flexible. Yeah, the uh, the sense of distraught you get with that emote is absolutely perfect. Kino also with the, I would say the derpy husky one. That is very fitting since he does have a, a husky on his team and doggo on his team as well. As we might be moving into a little bit of action, we have the Drake up in less mm -hmm. than 20 seconds. PSG already having a very strong vision advantage here. On the other hand, Beyond Gaming looks like they want to start that ARAM like you talked about going in for the mid wave instead. Nabi does have his teleport, so he could be here in an instant, while the rest of PSG do decide to change course and chase off. 
the remainder of Beyond Gaming as they herd them towards the top side of the map and it will be an easy, uncontested objective take once more as River on the Nidalee with already the Mythic complete is going to have no issues with soloing this whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So Mega Bank Beyond Gaming, they go ahead, concede that second dragon here. Again, they haven't quite hit that Muramana power spike, so they are playing a little bit reserved. It's just that if you're going to play a little bit reserved here, you definitely also should have kept that in mind for some of the early game when they did go a little bit too ham. But Doggo starting to come online as well. He has the Serpent's Fang. It's just the maximum amount of poke damage he can have at two items and very, very close to the Muramana transformation. So we should expect to see Mega Bank Beyond Gaming to transition into an ARAM formation in three or four minutes when that next dragon is going to come up. And it will be an Inferno Soul on the table as well, which is... I mean, we've, we've seen poke compositions with Inferno Soul, and uh, they ain't pretty. The beauty about losing the first two drakes is that you can get a quad infernal. Yeah. So, guys, Beyond Gaming isn't out of it, okay? This is all calculated. Actually, exactly. probably not. Uh, but, uh, you know, hopefully Beyond Gaming still has a bit more game in them you as River is able to solo the mid laner. Oh. Mawa nearly dies there. Has to use the flash to save himself. Uh, definitely not the picture you want to see if you're uh, Beyond Gaming's coaching staff as... Yes, she has set up camp in the blue side here. Doesn't seem like there's much Maple that can flash. Gaming can do to get away. Slice and Dice coming in from Maple. Flashes in as well. Gets the kill. And poor Mawan was just trying to pick up the wave as PSG looked towards the Baron buff very early on. Only 21 minutes into the game. Kino has to face check. Is slowed down. Takes the spirit to the face. And it prompts Beyond Gaming to come to the rescue. Burning a lot of ultimates right there. Chains of Corruption goes down. PSG still walk out feeling incredibly satisfied. Now we're going to get the TP coming in from Maple. And they do start out on the Baron. Beyond Gaming are going to venture into the river in time to spot this one out. But Dago doesn't seem like he's doing enough damage. One piercing arrow down and PSG make the turn. Incoming Kai Wing. They find the target onto Liang. Liang's almost dead before he can get any damage down. The Needlework finds two. They're going forward. Spear misses. And... Finally, we have Huja coming in with a three-man move not call, enough but damage. not enough damage to follow up. He dies instantly, sacrifices himself for the team, but PSG are happy to run that play again as they head straight back for Baron. PSG just executing beautifully here. They go ahead, they get that pick onto Mawan, and immediately they transition over to Baron. However, Poke is now here. So this is going to get more and more annoying to deal with as they try and finish this off. They should be able to finish it. It's just a matter of how are they going to be able to get out. Ooh. Really close. Doggo nearly took down the Baron, but River with the steady hands gets a smite and the fight ensues. We have Kaiwing in the front blocking most of the damage. Hush Hanabi manages to get out alive. Below 500 HP, the PSG do make the full retreat here. A little bit dicey at the very end. Dago nearly coming up with the hero play and copying the unified uh, Ziggs, but unfortunately wasn't able to get that one down. PSG with a very firm lead, now 6,000 gold ahead as we move into the replay. Yeah, it's really just the side of Mega Bank Beyond Gaming understanding that, hey, we don't want to allow this Baron to go down, but it's really just a poor place for that teleport to come through from Liang. He is, of course, that Camille that's been really stifled during this early game. And uh, Husha, he goes in for the hero play, but again, because of how far behind he's been put from that early game of PSG, the amount of pressure he's been put under, he doesn't have the items, he doesn't have the damage to be able to really one-shot the backline. And Mega Bank Beyond Gaming now put, put into a very, very difficult position as now the Siege comes through and the 1-3-1 one one definitely in favor for the side of PSG as they set up for a 1-4. Uh, Doggo does get tagged up by the crowd control there. Has to burn the cleanse to run away. And PSG get a pretty free tower in the meantime. We see that Beyond Gaming has to sack these towers to get Camille back into the game. Leon was put very far behind from the laning phase. 
And uh, they don't really have a say in this whatsoever. Maple comes across the wall with the blast cone, and now we have to engage by Kino onto Maple as he's the only one trapped across the wall. Pusha is going to get the Moonfall onto two, and they do find Renekton as the first target, but not enough to clean up the rest of PSG as they charge into the base, taking down the inhibitor tower. We do have Beyond Gaming with an extra death on their side, but they are able to hold strong. Dago forcing the rest of PSG away. PSG looks like they have gotten what they came for and now are retreating toward the Infernal Drake. Let's see if they actually go for this one with this many blinking HP bars. Does seem like they're still feeling rather confident mm -hmm. in just taking this one down. But in comes Leon. He finds Unify, takes him very low. Unify able to dodge out of the piercing There's arrow, one. but not the shock blast. Mawan finds the kill. Can they get the Drake? They're going to try Doesn't and chase. Happen. And now Leon has to run away as the Navi opens up on him. Does find the kill there. Kaiwin going low, but he's still going to be absolutely fine as the Navi is holding down the fort here. Decides not to go onto the scuttle. They retreat. They get everything that they came here for. Yeah, and right there you see the value of Beyond Gaming's composition, right? When they aren't that far behind and this is still an 8,000 gold lead for PSG yet even after taking that inhib they couldn't get more because of how much damage Dago and Mawen do have on these two champions at this point in the game. PSG they don't have the defensive stats quite yet to endure that poke and as a result they're forced to fall back. Unified has taken so much ship damage that when they go onto that dragon, no one's there to defend him, and he gets sniped out by that combination of the double snipers. I felt like that was Unified. It was a slight trolling, I would say, going for the ward yep. instead of going down there. He was just like, yeah, I'm far enough ahead. And to his credit, PSG still come out with everything, and Unified doesn't mm -hmm. even burn any summoners. He's just like, well, if I'm dead, I'm dead here. So... <laughs> I think that's a mentality you have to have when you're making a risky play is like, uh, if you get caught, you might as well save your summers in that situation. Yep. Probably never really saw Malin across the wall. A good snipe coming in from that end. And now Kino is the one to take a lot of damage here, is slowed down, and He's the Glacial Pitcher out. comes, focusing on the Leona. She does die in the very end, and we have to teleport to clean up the game. Coming in from Maple, Hanabi willing to just chase across the wall at this point. We have Beyond Gaming inching forward. They still have a Wombo combo with the Moonfall. They are down one member on the team. This PSG looks like they have softer targets to take on the map first, so they're not going to go for the Juggler. Going to go instead for the bottom tier 2 tower. And we do have a roam from Beyond Gaming. Really nice ward placed down. Is going to save them a lot of trouble. This Kaiwing does sweep that one away. And now we have the full poke combo. The artillery pieces are in place. And how much can they actually get going? Hanabi, hopping the mist down, doesn't take any damage whatsoever. And Maple, on the big crocodiles, just lurking in the wings. Beyond Gaming do not mount a successful defense. And PSG once again reset. And Beyond Gaming, they're fine with letting that tier t or tier 2 tower go here. They're mostly just concerned about trying to protect what's right in front of their base. And for Mega Bank Beyond Gaming, the issue is whenever they try and set up for a more 5v5 manner, they end up getting caught out before the play even gets to get started. Before, it was uh, Malan getting caught in that top lane right before Baron. Then later on, when they started the Baron buff, Liang just teleports to a really poor position. And right there, Kino goes out to ward when there's really no reason to go out and ward. They're trying to play oh. super defensive to begin with. And now they try and get a catch onto Hanabi. But the issue is sh he's playing a Gwen. And now the chase uh, the is on. The clap black is here. Kaiwin goes in, flashes for the Glacial Fisher. Does have the stasis to keep himself alive. No gravitum. So Beyond Gaming are still able gone. to walk back. In oh. comes Dago. Chains of Corruption completely blocked out, though. As Hanabi and they turn. continues to go in 1v4. They do find the kill with the Abella Seals to start things off. And Liang isn't inside his own base. Maple going in onto the artillery pieces as he's able to dissuade the other members from Beyond Gaming. Herds them back to their fountain. And PSG walk into the base unopposed. 
They are fighting this one. 5v3. Can Doggo make the miracle stand here? The ward off Can they clear PSG. out the wave? First next tower goes down. They the cleared the minions. Popping himself into stasis. Maple gets the stun. Plus the kill up. And PSG are continuing here. They do clear the wave like you mentioned. But there is a second wave coming in through the mid lane. Yep. It's and all on Doggo. He is going to make short work of that tower. Still fighting on. Doggo gets rooted down. Has to run away. Maple barely tags him. But Doggo stays alive. But he's 1v5 at this Wait, point. Wait, inhibitor respawned Inhibitors though. have respawned. Can Doggo find the kill on oh, no, Skywing? No! In the front side, Doggo still goes down. All right, down. it's all on the out. Great job by Unify to find that one. And this is the end of the game. Only Leon left alive. PSG being flashed across the board. And some true colors coming out as AHQ is also mentioned in this showdown between a lot of ex-LMS teams. And PSG, they go ahead and take down Beyond Gaming. They keep their perfect run alive here. And this is a really important game because Beyond Gaming, they were the team to take them down in Spring Split to throw that one loss blemish on their record they keep the slate clean this time around and now the, it feels like the rest of the league is just they're uh, all up for the taking at this point psg very clean game now i do want to grill you just a little bit because at the start of this game uh -huh. after the drafts we yep. did sort of push you a little bit for your analytical knowledge and you said and i believed you that psg uh -huh. was going to fall today the mega yep. bank beyond gaming was actually going to ascend to the top of the league. Yeah. What went wrong for Mega Bank Beyond Gaming? Why weren't they able to actually execute their strategy? The big issue was, of course, that Gwen pick. Liang taking this Camille into that matchup just wasn't able to generate a whole lot of leads. That also left a really big pressure void up in that top side. And you saw River really take full advantage of it. Uh, playing around this Renekton as well. It was really a composition that while it didn't scale very well, it allowed you to keep the diana down and to that point like they did a very good job executing that point and for beyond gaming they showed their cards a little bit too much in the fact that they did go for a b1 diana pick let's not forget this was a first pick diana which gave a lot of uh adaptability for psg to make a composition to counter that yeah, we had that Diana coming out on one end and on the other end, in terms of the first round of drafts, literally Renekton and Gwen. So it didn't really <laughs> look pretty for the top side once you saw that one. And I, I felt like you hit the nail on the head. It just was those uh, like early skirmishes and making Leon so far behind. We saw the two, 3v2 go in favor of PSG when mm -hmm. they didn't even have the numbers advantage there. So... Congratulations to PSG for uh, breaking our predictions. And there goes all my Twitch points, but uh, <laughs> it's okay. I can make them back. And we're going to be taking a look at the damage graph so far. Gwen yeah, just look at the part. damage. Yeah, well, it's, Gwen's such a huge part of this win. He out damaged the entire top side of uh, Mega Bank Beyond mm -hmm. Gaming. And it was a very smooth sailing from PSG. Never had a deficit after the five minute mark. Not much yeah, to say about they... this. PSG, once again, their Temple came, trumps Beyond Gaming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's really the story there. PSG, they were able to take advantage of their Temple advantages to really force the issue for Mega Bank Beyond Gaming. They ended up getting caught out because of just the suffocation that they felt. Uh, and you, you also see in the damage chart, the Jace and Varus, they were there in the scaling. They just weren't given the opportunity to really shine. Still did a lot of damage, but unfortunately that did not translate into a lot of kills as PSG ran the entire control of the map and was able to just win this in such textbook fashion. Mm -hmm. No real comeback from Beyond Gaming. We didn't even really see them try to get a full-on engage. And the MVP does go to Renekton, but unfortunately not Hanabi and Renekton. This is going to be Maple Renekton champion that i felt like he actually underutilized uh in this split a lot of other mid laners have had shots at renekton while maple kind of slow to the party but definitely showing up in the end here 427 61 percent kill participation didn't do a lot of damage but honestly he didn't need to on this team 
Yeah, and I love the way Maple was able to use this Renekton pick in tandem with the Nidalee. They were able to really transition a lot of that early tempo to get control of this game. And the Renekton in that mid lane, absolutely instrumental to their success today. A lot of roams, a lot of early skirmishes. Congratulations to PSG going 11-0 and zero so far. We only have an 18-game regular split, so they, they could still go higher. There's only seven games left for them to clinch that perfect split. We'll see if they can do it further down the line, but that's going to be it for Game 1. Don't go anywhere, as Game 2 is also going to be another banner between Machi Esports and J-Team.